Your third season talks about Joe, our local bad boy who decided to leave it all behind and to move to San Francisco with his new family. New city, new me. Joe's days of stalking, kidnapping, and murdering are long gone. His knees deep in suburbia now. He found a crazy equal, settled down, and switched his false imprisonment tendencies with wet locks. Nothing is more romantic than two cuckoos finding their significant wacky dudes. I'd say they're a match made in heaven, but I don't know if God would agree. Expecting a holy baby girl, Joe got stuck with the boring baby boy instead. To make it worse, they named him after Love's dead messed up twin brother, Forty. But gender's just a social construct, isn't it? All babies can be equally tortured with pretentious American lit after all. No Google Gaga for little Henry Forty. He learned how to stalk before learning how to walk. But we'll get to that later. The poor kiddo can sense his dad's murderous aura from a mile away. Which makes his crying fits an ending. Not that Joe cares. He's too distracted by the newest toy on the block. You can expect the player to drop the Game Boy and not play the giddy goat. As much as he likes to deny it, Joe is back to his old ways. And he's not done playing the field quite yet. You can tame a wildcat, but you can't keep this dog on a leash. His latest obsession is his neighbor Natalie, who's very much married. The ring on both of their fingers did not stop them from getting all flirty flirty with each other though. That's right, home girl is reciprocating. She's showering him with gifts about infidelity, calling him unannounced and turning the cameras off after inviting him over. Things are moving fast. They even squeezed in a mini makeout session before Joe decided not to go down the cheater route. He's a changed man now, and he's fully dedicated to the wife he hates and to the child he just can't connect with. With that being said, he did expand his bad time sniffing collection. Meanwhile, Love's Black Widow senses are tingling, and she's ready to devour something alright. It's not the affair she's worried about, it's the stalking rituals that's making her jolly. She thought the derangement was reserved only to her. So picture her surprise when she stumbles upon Joe's box of creepiness lurking in her house. Feeling betrayed, she of course blames the woman. Even Joe is more feminist at this point. She was already in the process of opening up a bakery. And guess who happens to be a realtor? Good old Natalie. The two meet up at the supposed place and that escalated quickly. Bye bye Nat. You can't really blame Love for her weapon of choice. She did have an axe to grind after all. I guess couples therapy is in order. That's one way of dealing with one's bloodthirst. To be continued. <laughs> <laughs>